Well, Air Force in this football game right away going to have to try to establish the option game. Ninth in a nation in running offense. Meanwhile, Oregon can't stop teams that run the football. They're last in the Pac-10. They're going to have to step up there. I think Air Force will win the game. But the upset will be Oregon's defense will come up from nowhere. The reason? They've had three weeks to get ready for the wishbone, and they outscore the Air Force Academy. Watch them. That's where they've been all year is nowhere. They're last in the Pac-10 in some major games. Well, it's the 1997 Las Vegas Bowl. And the matchup from the Pac-10, the Ducks of Oregon, against the Western Athletic Conference 21st-ranked Falcons of the Air Force Academy from Sam Boyd Stadium. And here's the biggest question right now. Blaine Morgan, the quarterback of the Air Force Academy, a deep thigh bruise the day they were leaving to come to Vegas. Will he be able to go in this football game this afternoon? Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and we are proud to be a part of the very first bowl game that is played for this 1997-98 year. In fact, this is the first of 10 bowl games that you'll see on ESPN2 and ESPN. Mike Godfrey joins me on the telecast as usual. And, Mike, when talking about Blaine Morgan and Air Force, if he can't go or if he's not 100 percent, tell us what kind of effect. Do you think he's going to start in this game? I do, Ron. I, I watched him in pregame warm-up. He's got a deep thigh bruise. And what that bothers him most on is pushing off with his right leg trying to cut the ball up carrying the ball on the option and then how many hits can he take in a ball game but remember this is a fullback oriented offense so that fullback's going to carry the ball most of the time you know it's interesting if you're not familiar with these two clubs Oregon uh, and Air Force quite a contrast Oregon's offense 420 yards plus a ball game they score over 30 points but Air Force only allows 12 points so obviously something has to give Ron there's no doubt about it that Oregon is so talented on offense. It's the most talented offensive football team Air Force has played this season. The big question and the question in every bowl game that you have to ask is the motivation there for Oregon the Ducks on offense. If it is, they'll score a lot of points against this Air Force defense. Mike, I have to tell the people we have been uh, snookered just a little bit. We were told by the Weather Bureau this time yesterday the wind was blowing 35 to 40 miles an hour. Look, that flag is hardly moving. Now, they are saying that it will pick up 12 to 15 miles an hour. Had that happened, though, Mike, I think that would have been big on behalf of the Air Force Academy because it would have hurt Oregon's passing game. Well, without a doubt, the big thing that the Ducks want to do is throw the football. They'd had two quarters where they'd thrown the ball into 40 mile an hour wind, and then when you run that option, you just got that little toss. So it looks as though everybody is fired and ready to go as we take a look at the head coaches. Uh, Mike Bellotti's third season at Oregon, 21 and 13, his numbers, second bowl game. And across the way, well, a gentleman who has uh, been wearing that Air Force blue for a long time, 14th season at the Academy, ninth bowl game for Fisher DeVere. Certainly one of the really class acts in all of college football as far as the coaches are concerned. Force will kick this one off. Oregon won the toss. Saladin McCullough, one of the deep men, along with Johnson. And here's the kick, and the 97 Las Vegas ball is underway. From the nine-yard line, it's Johnson. Now, he is a world-class sprinter. Thank you. It is very difficult, I'll tell you right now, to know exactly how healthy Blaine Morgan is because he's such a tough young man. He honestly won't tell his coaches and trainers how much pain he's going to play with. But watch him very closely. He does have full range of motion in that right leg, and that was the coach's concern. The question now is, how long can he go, though? Because in this option-style offense for Air Force, as the quarterback sprints out, the very first place he's going to take a hit is on that right leg. Well, this is Akili Smith. Play action, and Oregon going to go on top on first down. And it's Johnson. He's got it. And he will take it the distance. 69 yards. talked about in the open this is the most skill that Air Force is going to face on defense this entire year Tim Curry number five just squats down and just gets run by by Pat Johnson number 83 and the ball is delivered right on the mark by Keeley Smith a nice way to start the bowl season Frankel with the extra point attempt he's got it so there's a break in the action and we've only played 18 seconds Seven to nothing. Oregon goes on top with the strength of Pat Johnson's touchdown reception. Well, I knew that ducks flew quickly, but uh, 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> 69 yards. Uh, we had not been able to get out of our mouth that uh, on the kickoff that he had world class speed and in <laughs> fact is on the track team. But boy, Pat Johnson just made very quick work. Frankel's kick is going to come down to Farmer at the eight. Out of the 25 to the 27 yard line. Passing is something that actually comes off what the run sets up for them, right, Mike? Yeah, Ron, they're, they're a running football team. Make no mistake about that. The other thing in this ball game is, you know, when you're playing against a wishbone team, you want to set the tempo, and that's what Oregon did. But remember this. Sometimes you can score so fast, you fall asleep, uh, and let's see what happens to Oregon now. That's a great point. So the Air Force on first down, running from that familiar wishbone, and by golly, they're going to throw on first down, and Morgan goes on top and tipped away Farmer, the intended receiver, and it was Edwards who knocked it down. Good start by Air Force offensively, trying to, to again, make Oregon respect the run fake the option right on the first play and try to get it to Farmer. Matt Farmer, number six down the field, just waited a little bit too long, and you can see Matt Farmer trying to get himself positioned against Eric Edwards, number four. Big splits by uh, Air Force, Ron. Uh, Air Force trying Offside, to open it up. On the defense, the five-yard penalty remains second down. the handoff he'll take it straight ahead for about one yard Patu Saul Patu number 48 a redshirt freshman out of Seattle is there to make the tackle Miller Bird Subalua and Patu the down four the linebackers and it all starts with 44 Peter Sermon uh, and in the secondary they start a true freshman at the right cornerback spot it's Rashad Bowman joined us it was Oregon scoring on the first play from scrimmage, 69 yards. Option outside, Morgan gets the pitch, and there's not much there for Ruff as Bowman comes up from the cornerback spot. The young man we were just talking about waits for the snap back at the 18-yard line. And Pat Johnson, the man who scored a moment ago, is back deep. He signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 23-yard line. Check the Oregon offense a moment ago. They scored so quickly. Akili Smith at quarterback. Saladin McCullough, the leading rusher in the Pac-10 this year, along with Eric Wynn. And the receiver, Spence, the tight end, Johnson, who scored, and Hartley. And the offensive line, they don't have a lot of reserves here. Aguirre, DeVries, Moan, Daly, and Clues. Daly, probably the most consistent. Clues has played every position on that offensive line, except center. Here's McCullough. Has five, has ten. He's loose in the secondary. McCullough is going to take this the distance. Two plays and two touchdowns for the Oregon Ducks. 76 yards. Two plays, 145 yards of offense for Oregon. And the most skill, again, that Air Force has seen this year. Saladin McCullough may be the best tailback in the country nobody knows about. Outstanding running back, you see, with a good cutback here. Good moves in the secondary. And the speed now to take off and lead Tim Curry, number five. Very, very talented running back, Saladin McCullough. And it also uh, breaks the rushing record that he was going after. Ahmad Rashad, is, uh, who was Bobby Moore at the time at Oregon, uh, is the man who held it. Ron, this is so important. Again, when you're playing a wishbone team, you jump out early. Force the wishbone team to play to your tempo, not to theirs. The celebration penalty stepped off against Oregon. And Frankel is going to be attempting this one from uh, 35 yards away. They'll put it down at the 25. It's a low pass, and the kick is no good. Wide left. Now we'll look at the Oregon bench, 13 to nothing. After that 76-yard uh, run from scrimmage, Saladin McCullough. And there you see the single-year rushing leader. Over Bobby Moore in 1971 is when that record was uh, established. From the five, this is Brown. 
Brown is going to be stopped around the 25-yard line. List of realistic goals for uh, Oregon and the Ducks uh, offense especially was not very long. One of the items on there was get a couple of scores early because if we can do that, then we have Air Force exactly where they want them. Behind the Oregon bench here, players looking at each other in the eyes, shaking their heads. They didn't even believe they could do it this early. Straight ahead on the carry. It'll go for a couple as Bowman comes up. Now they want a counter, and there's nothing. Ruff going to be hit and knocked down for a yard loss at the 25, and just what the Air Force didn't want. And they run the counter. It's Ruff. Gets outside in the left, 30, 35, and I believe he's got the first down. He does. Tobin Ruff, number 19, that motion to the right side. You have everybody on that side, and there's a missed tackle. Fletcher. By Michael Fletcher, the safety. Now, the safeties are so big in the option. They've, they're running downhill all the time. Pagaris and Fletcher should have big days in the secondary if they stop the option. Now, well, here's the fullback, and he will take it for a couple as Gilliam is hit by Garth White. Oh, See the man in motion. They roll the pocket and the pass. That, that uh, really got away as the pass is overthrown. Chandler, the intended receiver. Uh, Eric Edwards came over to make it almost an option kind of field, but particularly when you pitch wide it's a lot. It's perfect for running downhill toward the hashes or toward the out-of-bounds mark. It's third down, and Mike, the line to make is the 46. You can see the late change, the stem on the part of uh, the Oregon defense. And here they come to the outside. Morgan will keep it, takes it out to the 43-yard line. His first punt, 43 yards, and Oregon got very close to that one. However, I'd look for them to have a return on here. And on a line drive kick, they do. This is Johnson. Pat Johnson, who has the 69-yard touchdown return, and he will be stopped at the 30-yard line. Now let's see here if uh, Air Force can, they would have a first if they stop them on first down here because both plays that they have had of the two series have gone for touchdowns. Dead ball, false start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remains first down. They stopped him. <laughs> well, they still got first down, though, yeah. right? And, Ron, the other thing you look for in this ball game now that Pat Johnson showed his speed and McCullough is Tony Hartley and Blake Spence, the tight end. They benefit because now, all of a sudden, you got to double Johnson and you got to start crowding the line of scrimmage for the run. And the quick pass out here, they've got it complete, and that is Brust. And Brust is going to go over the 30 to the 31-yard line. Brust and Hartley go to the top of your screen. That's Jokes, who is moving the high the center as McCullough gets the handoff, and it's going to be stopped after a gain of about four at the 35-yard line. If uh, they can pick up the first down, they need the 40-yard line. Keely Smith going to throw. Straight drop. Got Johnson at the 45. And he is finally going to be pushed out of bounds at around the 47 by Curry. Good job there. But on the snap of the ball, you're going to see number five, Tim Curry, just bail out. He's bailing out because of the respect for the speed of Pat Johnson. Well, there was a flag down on the play, and Oregon is taking the walk back. Ineligible receiver downfield. It'll be a five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. Still need the 40-yard line. Smith steps up into the pocket. Pressure is on. This is where Smith can absolutely kill you. He goes out of bounds, and then he delivers the blow out of bounds. And the Air Force player pipes, gets up looking like, wait a minute, I can't hit him out of bounds. How come he can hit me out of bounds? <laughs> and that's the question he's asking the official. Because Achille is 6'3", 215 pounds. Pipes is only 192. And the Pipes had a legitimate gripe. Watch this. All right, he's going to go out of bounds right there, and then he delivers the blow. I'm sorry. That's 15 Oregon. He has not had a kick blocked in three years. And, and the key is Tim Curry. He's blocked five kicks, number five. They're coming after him, and he gets it away. Nice punt also. Farmer 
gets open. 40, 45, and he takes it just shy of the 50-yard line. 44 yards in the punt and 19 on the return, and the Air Force will take it over with their best field position. Well, they thought they were in Las Vegas, but some of the Oregon Duck players found themselves in New York, New York this week. The uh, theme resort along the strip is a striking resemblance uh, to the real thing. Shocking, in fact. Uh, <laughs> one last final way just before the game. Uh, plenty for everybody to enjoy all week long here on the Strip in Las Vegas. Ron, this is the series now. I look for Air Force to exploit uh, this duck defense a little bit. Now, this third series, they've had a look at what they're doing to them for two series. They'll change some blocking schemes here. Let's see, what they, see if they can free uh, Gillum, the fullback. Gilliam, number 21, a junior out of Lone Oak, Arkansas. And here's the pitch. This is Singleton. A great one-on-one -on -one coverage for Garris from that free safety position. Up as Blaine Morgan came off that last series after the first real shot he took to that right thigh. But so far, so good as far as the paint is concerned, gentlemen. Here's the case. What they've done is to create more space between where the deep bruise is and the thigh board so he can actually absorb more shot. Okay. We'll uh, watch it closely, Adrian. It is a second down and 12. And straight ahead with the fullback to the 50-yard line. White and Sermon come up to uh, make the tackle on Gilly. Third down. They need the 40 of Oregon. Pressure up the middle. Pass a throwback. Good heavens. Head rough wide open. Remember now, Ron, again, he hasn't practiced for four or five days. So when you don't practice, these things happen. You throw the ball high, you throw it high from the middle of the field to the sideline. He knows he's just going to settle down a little bit. Good high coverage kick. Fair catch is signal for it. Runs away from it and goes into the end zone. Keely Smith operates at quarterback, youngster out of San Diego, California. And they go with the running play to McCullough, and he's going to be stopped after three. Ron Jenkins, the nose guard, a senior for the Air Force Academy out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Second down to draw place. This is McCullough, and he is hit hard by Pipes. Steve Pipes up out of the secondary. It's going to be third down at about three and a half. Ron, you talk about Chris Gizzi, just an outstanding uh, linebacker. His dad, Al, is the inside linebacker coach at Baldwin Wallace College, but he kept cutting his nose and uh, bleeding more and more. So finally, the coach has just said, we're not going to wear a helmet when he practices because if he, he has the... Uh, the helmet on, he's going to hit people. So they, they <laughs> made him keep his helmet off the entire practice. And look at the uh, the uh, the major human behavior. <laughs> Chris Gizzy, kind of guy that you love to coach. Pass caught in the flat. That's Hartley. Hartley is more the possession type receiver, and receivers hate to hear that because what you're saying in a kind way is they're not quite as fast as like the world class sprinter like uh, Pat Jelly Smith now three of three 82 yards and a touchdown on first down sets deep in the pocket he's going to go on top again and Pat Johnson is down there and he just lost it Mike I thought that ball was close enough to he didn't pull up lame did he no but I'll tell you Frank Steenpine grabbed him uh, about halfway down the field and he's hurt out of the corner which is bad news for Air Force but you're going to see number 20 Frank Steenpine against Pat Johnson uh, he pulled up no, lame. He, did, he pulled up lame, and he kind of bumped him a little bit. And uh, I'm not sure he shouldn't have caught that. I start, that's what I'm saying. It's like Johnson lost the ball for a moment in this uh, high sky. But the little bump that he got from uh, Frank Steenpine. So Steenpine out of the ball game, and number 10, Donald Hayes, a junior out of San Diego, comes in at that quarterback spot. Meanwhile, McCullough runs it back into the boundary, still on his feet, and he'll take it for a gain of about six. That's a Awfully good run right there. It gives it four minutes to play. Opening quarter. Oregon, 13 to nothing. They have a third down, and they need four. Offside on the defense. It'll be a five-yard penalty sufficient for a first down. When you lose Stane Pine, who is normally the field corner, and Smock comes in, uh, who normally does it, he's only a sophomore, then you've got double-headed each side of the field. Here comes McCullough. Waits for his block, cuts in behind him at the 50, and he will uh, have about seven yards in the play. Well, uh, that is just as uh, Blaine Morgan being injured at quarterback to lose this guy. 
because it's just what it sounds. Your field corner is the guy who always draws normally. He's got the open field to cover. He's your best guy. And they're going to put uh, Hartley on smog number 10, and, uh, and they're going to work him. The pass in the flat, incomplete. That was to the tight end, Jelks. Ron, I'll tell you who was wide open on that play, Pat Johnson. Came clear, but Akili Smith didn't look down the field when you roll out like that. You you always look to the deep throw first and the quarterback. And Akili Smith took his eyes off of number 83 Johnson. Look at how open he gets. Well, you see the numbers on Smith almost 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns, six interceptions. Very dynamic personality. And as uh, his coach Dirk Cutter said, just a very charismatic guy as well. Pass right over the middle of that tip. I think it was Gizzy. Yep. Chris Gizzy. Uh, number 24, Kevin Parker. And, and Gizzy just hit his helmet, number 51. Sure did. But a big stop again for the Air Force defense because they were headed for a route here if they'd have let him go in one more time. Well, you just have to know where number five is. A Kirk. tough area to block a kick because you always got to worry about the fate once you cross it and get close to that 50-yard line. Farmer calls for the fair catch and takes it to Air Force bound. Well, interesting item about a lot of these football players who give you that Darth Vader look with that uh, that plate across the front of their face mask, particularly in Chris Gizzy's uh, standpoint. Now, this is actually a protective plate that he has that he can obviously see through, but because he bleeds so much and gets so much blood in his eyes, this actually helps him to see better. The, the plate is actually corrected, helps his vision, and if he starts bleeding, the referees won't see it and take him out of the game. <laughs> Well, that nose will get a closer shot of it uh, before the afternoon is over as Morgan cuts it upfield, and he took a pretty good shot on the thigh there by Peter Sermon. Go back to the Gizzy story, and uh, Cal McCombs was talking about his nose, and he said he dropped an interception in a ball game and came off to the sidelines, and he was bleeding so much, he said, I lost it because that blood in my eyes. And Cal McCombs said, how can I argue with that? I mean, how can I give him that? Cal also said that there's something inspirational about Gizzy when he comes off the field bleeding the way he does. Uh, he said he's just, he's an emotional and inspirational leader. And nobody's going to come off with a sprained ankle on that ball club. That's right. There's the pitch. This is rough. And breaks the tackle. Then gets tattooed at the 25-yard line by Figueres. Nice tackle by Jaya Figueres, number 22. It's like a cut man in yeah. the corner. See, Carmen Basilio. You remember Carmen? Oh, I mean, he used to get cut all yeah, the time. Yeah, he did. That's uh... Freddie Pacheco. Was he? Was throw some balking. Ferdy for Checo. Ferdy, I started to say, rather than Freddie. Now Freddie's his brother. Third down, and they need to take it to the 29-yard line to get the first. Morgan, here comes the pitch. Singleton, and Singleton with the second effort, I believe, yes, picked up the first down. Figueres up from that free safety spot there to make the tackle. You have to be impressed the way the Ducks are playing defense, though, here in the first uh, quarter. They have taken it to Air Force's offense. Let me ask you a question, Mike. Also, as tough as it is to play a wishbone team, you did have the extra time, but you're also playing a one-dimensional team rather than a two-dimensional team. So does it that allows you to put your focus just on that? It's, it's, it's easier from that aspect, but eventually, as soon as you say that, they're going to throw a pass here and catch <laughs> you with a post. Here comes a reverse as they pitch it back. Farmer fumbles it, gets a good hop. And now turns it upfield. The farmer is a fool. We're talking about, oh, those are the things right there. The reverse, the pass, the things you don't see during the weeks that you're preparing for this wishbone offense. He got a nice bounce, Matt Farmer. But if he would have caught that, he or, might have been gone. He here. would have scored a touchdown, I believe, because it was wide open. It, it gave him just that extra count, 1,001, to uh, react and get back over to the football. The back to back first downs for the Academy. Setting to throw, going to go long and incomplete. The cover on the play was Bowman, and the Air Force folks thought that possibly interference should have been called. Is Newman uh, the intended receiver? The freshman corner that uh, started from the first day on the campus. He's 5'8, 165. Working against Dylan Newman, number nine. Looks like pretty good coverage. You're right. Gilliam is the man, number 21. This time he's blocking as the pitch goes to Ruff. And Ruff is going to take it for about two and a half yards. Peter Sermon, whose name we've already called about three times, is outside to make the tackle. Wishbone coach. 
because it just takes a little while for you to get that big play. Well, play action, and this pass incomplete. Newman, the intended receiver, took a 69-yard bomb for a touchdown on uh, their first possession. This is a nice kick. Fair catch called for it again. It goes over his head and into the end zone. LaCorey Collins down at the bottom of the screen. A redshirt freshman, huge for a wide receiver at 6'4 and a half, 215. McCullough, no place to run, and they're going to knock him down for a loss. One of the rare times that he has been caught today, Bryce Fisher, the first man there. Defensive numbers uh, in that first quarter. Sermon for Oregon with three and a half tackles, three of those solo, and a Figueres with two and a half. Uh, Pikes for Air Force with one and a half, and Gizzy with one. Second down. About 12. Keely Smith sets up the screen and the ball loose on the ground. And in fact, illegal touching yeah. by an ineligible receiver will be a loss of down. Third down. They may be sleepwalking a little bit here, Ron, because they had so much success in those first two plays. Air Force shows blitz, but they stay at home. And Smith is hit in his side. And Ron, now that sets up, you see the good uh, swim move, and he just gets by Michael Clues. But that sets up the possible punt block right now. You're exactly right. So let's make sure that we know where number five is. Right now, Curry is lined up on the left side. Farmer is the deep man. And they're coming after him. He gets it away. Plenty of time, and it's a great kick. Wow, this is doing it under pressure. And just as he catches the ball, here comes a flag. McLemore looks as though he uh, injured himself, and he has been hurt. Well, that, uh, that was awful close. Yep. Violation of the two-yard halo. It'll be a five-yard penalty and a first down. They bring the option back to the open side of the field, and the pitch at the last moment. Valerio Brown, a freshman out of Lake City, South Dakota. And they may have to use him more, Mike. He's the fastest. He's the least experienced, but he gives them some uh, some quick step. They say without a doubt, I was talking to Ben Martin, a former Air Force coach who does the radio here. He said by far he's the best back, has the most speed, and he's the most productive guy. A freshman, 5'11", 175. Lake City, South Carolina. Hill is the fullback, and he gets the handoff. Hill takes it straight ahead for two, maybe three yards. Look at the splits on the offensive big, line. Big again, splits. They are very, very wide. They brought him stemming. Now they're checking off. Straight ahead. Nope. They go with the pitch. Turns it up as Singleton inside the 30 to the 29 and a half yard line. You see the ball get kicked out. Now here's Michael Fletcher, number one. He has a chance there to make it a make a play and misses that tackle. I would dare say this is four down territory yeah, for this. So. I think you're right at this point in the ball game. They roll the pocket, pressure is on, and he throws long, and it is knocked away by Bowman at the right. last moment. And we see no movement on the sideline. No. So I the kicking team not coming on. I. This is what they got to do. They got to they got to go for the fourth down situation. Good coverage here. I think you'll see a run here now, Ron. I'd be surprised if it's a throw, but uh, nothing should surprise us uh, today <laughs> and in Las Vegas. So uh, we'll see if they come back with the option here. And they're calling here. the timeout. Mike Barron, number 85, had come way out to the left side as a wide receiver. And he turned and said, let's take a timeout. We'll take it with him. 12-21 remaining until halftime. The Las Vegas Bowl on ESPN2 is presented by Las Vegas. It's nonstop action around the clock, and we're open 24 hours. And in part by the new Dodge. It's about change. Don't know if you've ever been to the Las Vegas area or not. That's uh, Hoover Dam. And truly one of the magnificent things that you've ever seen. To, to look at that gorge and how they put that gigantic dam in there, Mike. I saw Chevy Chase go across that in Las Vegas vacation. Well, I, uh, I saw it in person, Mike. It was a little more impressive that way. Fourth down. They got to take it to the 24-yard line. Air Force sets up as though they're going to throw. They do. They got him open. He dropped the football. Good heavens. Brown had it hit him in the wrong place. But now, again, the Air Force defense has to come out and try to shut down 
this talented offensive football team. Looks like going to see a quarterback change here, Ron. Yep. Jason Moss. Junior out of Yuma, Arizona. Sets in the pocket, got all the room in the world on the left side, has five, 10, and about 13 yards, and is tackled, and now here comes the flag. Jason Moss, in eight games, Ron, through 13 touchdown passes, eight interceptions. He was the starting quarterback in wins over Fresno and Utah. Dirk Cutter, the offensive coordinator, said he deserves to play in this ball game. We're a two quarter. I don't know. There's another one now. He was close to that out of bounds, Mark. Well, the thing that Air Force has to complain about as you look at Akili Smith on the sideline is uh, the, the play where Pipes got hit by Akili Smith after the play was dead and there was no flag. This one cost the Air Force dearly. Yeah, that was close right there. I... Moss, 95 of 172. Almost 56% completion percentage, over 1,400 yards, and he threw 15 touchdowns with eight interceptions. Play action, goes up on top, and well off the mark, Blake Spence, the intended receiver. Blake, an interesting uh, player, a senior out of San Juan Capistrano, California, 6'4", 245 at a senior. And the coaches think, and from what the scouts have said, is that Spence is going to get uh, a lot of looks by the pros. Well, he's an outstanding tight end, uh, Ron. He's 6'4", 245, uh, a good pass receiver, and uh, Jason Moss just missed him on that play. So it's second down. Hartley comes to the bottom of the screen along with uh, Pat Johnson. McCullough tries to get outside on the right, and he's going to be stopped after a gain of only one. Third down. They need to take it to the 32. Moss's pass going long is going to be well overthrown, not even close to Hartley. Holding on the offense. The penalties decline, fourth down. Josh Bidwell stands back waiting for the snap at his own 45. And aims this one for the sideline, and he got it. Maybe a little quicker than he wanted to as the official moves up. And still walking, they say, right well, there. The uh, stratosphere here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, as the sun is trying to go down behind those, uh, those uh, mountains to the west. Partly cloudy day, but much, much better than what we had anticipated. Winds were supposed to blow like 35 miles an hour, and that simply has not come about. You have to wonder if they were, if Oregon would have been able to throw a 69-yard touchdown pass in the first play. Right? right. They didn't need the wind behind their back. Morgan, no place to go. Going to be tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Miller. And the one thing that Oregon is doing, they are getting a push, causing Morgan, instead of running down the line of scrimmage, parallel to his back, he literally has taken a couple of back steps. It's, it's screwing up the timing of everything. They're getting penetration, Ron. When you have big splits, you can see the big splits of Air Force right here. Their offensive line. And when you get those big splits, you have a choice. You can move out with them, or you can take them. And Oregon's taking them and getting up the field. So it is second down at about 12 yards for the first as they go in a quick count straight ahead with the fullback. A gain of about three in the play. Up until that play, fullbacks for Air Force only had combined total of uh, eight yards. To hurry. Eight. Two seconds down to one. He didn't get it off. That's the lay of game against Air Force. There comes the late flag, and he takes a hit. Deck like that is my point. Right. There's no play. <laughs> Dead ball. Delay of game. On the offense, it remains third down. Yeah, tell the quarterback there's no play. Yeah, it's I mean, easy he, for him to say. I mean, the kid is already hurt. I mean, are right here. It's got to be dead. Got to be dead. Got to be dead. They're still coming, and they they crunch him. <laughs> defense. It's Stubler, the defensive coordinator, has done a nice job. You like to get Air Force in third and 14. Counter play and nothing. Going to be a loss of three, maybe four more yards. Well, we have touted the Air Force block. This would be a heck of a spot for Oregon to come after him, and they do have 10 men at the line of scrimmage as he waits six yards deep in his own end zone. And they're coming after him, and they get it. Block, loose in the end zone, recovered for the touchdown.
Garrett Sabo, number 35, I believe, blocked it, Ron. Sable, I think. Sable. Sable blocked it. And the touchdown is scored by Parker, the reserve running back. Well, they get, they get close early in the ball game twice. They just ran over the personal protector. And Sable with the block. Garrett Sable. They're going to try to make it a 20 to nothing ball game. And uh, there was movement, obviously, before the ball was snapped. Now, this penalty obviously makes Dead it ball. a ball start on the offense. It's a five yard penalty, and we're still in the try down. Alex Wright with the extra point attempt. And that one is wide right. No good. So, there's a timeout on the field. 8.33 left until halftime. Well, there's happiness on the Oregon side of the field for, uh, for good reason. They just got a blocked punt and uh, have scored. Missed a second extra point. My time of possession, you uh, had talked about how important it would be in this ball game. Yeah, sometimes statistics lie a little bit. Air Force has 13, 25, 27 plays. Oregon, 8.02, but yet they've been able to score so quickly. So it's a little deceiving that Air Force has uh, controlled this ball game time of possession wise farmer takes it out across the 25 to the uh, 26 yard line. watch up inside here they get so much penetration they get three players and there's a miss block by the personal protector and the left slot back well, do you see the first play I mean, the first play of the first drive first play of the second drive and then uh, a block punt just a moment ago Morgan sets going to go long. He's got a man wide open, and the ball is dropped. Yeah, but not a good sign when you start to have to throw. Uh, this is a ball club that has made their money and made their wins running the football. The ball run right through the hands of Tobin Rowe. Even the movement of the, the duck defense is causing Air Force problems and moving on the offensive line, pick up a flag Dead here. ball. Ball start offense. And remain second down. The point that uh, coach was making there moments ago, Ron, something the defensive line for Oregon has adjusted to here. Rather than read and react to the helmet of the offensive line as Air Force, as many other teams have tried to do to stop the option, they're attacking these guys. They're attacking right up those wide stances, those wide holes as you guys described. That's why they're doing so well. The coach is reminded of them of that point in pregame. Don't read and react. Take it to the ball. Attack right up through there. Make sure you've got your man, and you'll slow him down. That's exactly what they're doing. Morgan under pressure. Moves his pass. This time complete to Ruff. And Ruff goes down. Well, right now he's winning both. The pregame and the real game. Morgan pops a pass. Blown coverage. There's nobody there. Now here comes a flag. The thing is, the flag is on the player that had three guys on him. Oh. Folks, I'll tell you what. Newman not only looked like the first guy out to practice. <laughs> He might have been part of the gold rush. No. There was no one around. Dylan Newman uh, was so wide open. Pass interference on the defense. It'll be a spot foul and an automatic first down. Dylan Newman down the field, and you can see how wide open. There is not a safety around him. <laughs> and there's the holding on Tobin Ruff. They scrimmage from their own 39-yard line. Pitch comes to Ruff. Turns it up, crosses the 45, and close to a first down. In fact, he's going to have Force can go down the field and score a touchdown, not a field goal. If they go to the touchdown, we've got a ball game because they're starting to figure some things out here. Here's the option. There's the good block that you mentioned by Jamal Singleton, number 24, and Ruff gets a 10-yard gain. Now they start to get the option game going. So you start working outside in now. The outside things are starting to work for Air Force. You see that late shift on a part of Oregon, and they were offside, lined yeah. up offside by about two yards by a yard, I should you say. Look at the uh, the Duck defense, and I harped on this. Their ranked total defense, 102nd in the offside country. Offside on the defense. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, those numbers tell it all right there. But they got a cushion at this juncture, 19 to nothing. Play action again. Going to go on top, and and threw the interception. But Garris, it looked as though he was the intended receiver. Trying to hit Tobin Ruff down the sideline and uh, Figueres, the safety, number 22. 
There's nobody fooled here. Wow, and a big opportunity for Air Force. Uh, if you're right, they have a first down at their own 24. Plenty of time, 6.38 left in this opening half. And here's McCullough breaking tackles and taking it to the 30-yard line. Good for about six yards. I, I blame men on practice time. Well, I, I've never seen many guys. There's some great ones that does, doesn't have to practice. But when you're a, a, a quarterback, you need the timing. You need to practice. And when he was injured in that practice session, he's had to sit out about the last four days. Latimer, the running back, 40. Out to the 45-yard line, and Pipes will make the tackle on him. A sophomore out of Colorado Springs, of all places, is Darian Latimer. He's replacing Saladin McCullough, and it's uh, picking up 15 yards on the play. Well, I thought you had an interesting uh, point that you told Mike Bellotti, the Oregon coach, the other day, and he was not aware of uh, when you talked about the number of starters from the state of Oregon. Only two, one and, on uh, offense and one on defense. And that they've done a nice job recruiting around the country, uh, Colorado, California. Uh, all over that they've had to go out because the population base of Oregon. That's what, only what, three million people in the state of Oregon. And they get some good players out of there as Latimer takes it straight ahead again. He'll go for three. Eight seniors on this offensive football team for Oregon. So this is a veteran football team on this side of the ball. And you look at Akili Smith. Uh, he started. Moss, this is his second series for him. Quick out pass, throws it complete. And Pat Johnson finally run out of bounds after he's picked up the first down. It's gonna be a gain of about 11 on the play. And it was Smog who was out there to make the tackle on it. Well, Pat Johnson uh, is an outstanding receiver and you see him one-on-one -on -one again on the outside getting the ball from Moss. And he had a lot of people after him, Ron. Arizona State, Colorado, Oregon, San Diego State, UNLV. Uh, Good stiff on arm right there. He went to his first visit, UNLV, and the coach told him, he said, you're going to find a place that, that you feel comfortable in. And the next visit was Oregon. He felt comfortable, and he canceled him rest of This is Latimer. He got a hit with an ankle tackle and then just kind of fell forward behind his blockers as Bryce Fisher will wind up with the stop at the Air Force Academy with a player shaken up. I think it's uh, Fisher who is still down. Well, he's just now up at the 40. Probably the most important thing when you talk about Pat Johnson and world-class speed is that he went through spring practice for the first time last year rather than running track. And the coaches say, without a doubt, he has more confidence. He's now beginning to believe he's good. He made a commitment. He made a commitment to football. And then you're seeing now the fruits of that commitment. Good pass. That's a lateral. He can throw, and he does. Looking for Stitz in the end zone, and the big tight end drop. The officials were trying to check here, Ron, to make sure that Blake Spence was a, an eligible receiver, which he was. Johnson takes the ball, throws a nice pass. It is a good pass. Look at that. Hey, he should have caught that yeah, for the touchdown. Right through his hands. Yep. He had a similar thing happen to him at, uh, during the year. He needed 20 yards uh, against Utah for the record. And they threw him one pass and went through his hands and dropped it. So he lost the record. Three wide receiver set on the third down at six. Pressure and Moss gets away. Still on his feet and he's going to pick up the first down. This is amazing. He should have been tackled about three different times. He just refused to go down. By the quarterback, the junior quarterback. Almost down, and then it looked like some Air Force players stopped on that play. Well, they thought because Izzy was all over him, they thought that his knee would go to the ground. But as you could see, the officials not blowing the whistle because his knee was never there. First down, it's Latimer. Breaks out from behind his blockers, and Oregon's doing a nice job. Their backs are just continuing to run behind those offensive linemen until they're hit directly. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Ron, do you know who was up cheering the loudest and the most after that uh, play just before? Akili Smith, who really is the more agile, mobile quarterback. And usually, you know, in these uh, one-two quarterback rotations and in that Washington game when he really took over as the one, if not the only, you might expect a little, uh, oh, hesitation from some of the other guys, but not in this case. Akili was up there cheering on Mr. Moss. And in our conversation with him, Ron, he said, I was selfish at the beginning of the year. I didn't want to share time in quarterback position. 
swing the pass out to Latimer. Tries to stay in bounds, and now here comes a flag, and I, that may be a a clip. Illegal block in the back on the offense. It'll be a 10-yard penalty, and we'll replay second down. Here's Pat Johnson, number 83, cracking back on the backer. Wow, good hit. That was the legal part of that play, and here was the illegal part by Dick Moen. Only thing that has stopped the Ducks has been penalties. Yeah, you're right. You can see the clock shows 2.41 left until halftime. Moss's pass sings it through. Right through Johnson's hands. That may have gotten there a little quicker than he was anticipating. Here's the, the sun's about to go down. I believe they're heading to the crap table. <laughs> Get over the top, Get over. Air Force coming off the corner after the quarterback, and the pass is incomplete. They're going to go for it. This is an interesting opportunity here for uh, Air Force. They can hold him. Leading 19 to nothing. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Good ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it remains fourth down. And even 231 on the clock yet, you're not going to punt them deep in the hole. Now here comes a punting team. Huh? Make them go the distance. You don't want to give Air Force the football. Too good a field position here just before half. You know, another guy to watch and on special teams. We talk so much about Air Force as Bidwell sets to kick his 31 Eric Wynn, uh, who was selected all conference by the Pac-10 coaches because of his performance on special teams. The starting fullback. Punt angles it for the sideline, and well, they got set up and it went right by. The man who would set up at the goal line. So let's take a time. Ron, they don't want to take too many chances here because they're going to get the opening kickoff in the second half. Farmer's going to take that for about a 13, 14 yard gain. Air Force throwing the ball far more here in the first half than what they are accustomed to is they flip this pitch to Ruff and he goes out of bounds, stops the clock at around the 34 yard line. It's the reluctance of the NFL, Mike. Oh, and it's their livelihood, a free farm system, and they still don't want to no. do what they're supposed to do to take care of it. Rillis takes the ball close to the 40 after the pitch. Fletcher and Figueres have had outstanding first half. Yeah, Figueres really, we have called his name a lot. Third down, you see him creep up the linebacker. Morgan got his man and hold it. He missed him, he missed him bad. Don't think that gave him the opportunity. And it's returnable on the 23. Now uh, gets all he can and then uh, steps out of bounds. To see some of these players and some of the postseason action, the uh, pass to Johnson complete just across the 35. Quick out pass, got this one complete, but a nice job by Air Force to corral Donald Haynes. He caught it and had no place to go. Ron, thanks very much. You know, the Air Force Academy, even though they haven't scored any points here in the first half, has been playing with some extra incentive and some extra support because just up the road is Nellis Air Force Base, which ever since 1953 has been home to the Thunderbirds, which is, of course, the performing pilots and their F-16s. And I'll tell you what, the other day I accepted their invitation to take a ride. Finally found the confidence to get strapped in. Never, I'll tell you, putting on a football uniform was never so complicated. And then we started to roll out onto the tarmac. Going east and west was no problem, but then we went vertical. <laughs> Love it, Adrian. Yeah, we're pointed straight on it right about now. He's going right on over the top. And if you look back, Bill, you look back, you can see our smoke down there below. See that? Wow. Into them, like this, and I'm only pulling about five and a half. Degrees. You'd really want to be pulling about eight or nine. All right. Well, that was I got about 9.2 up here. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. I'll see you when you get Ron, with that helmet on, your head weighs about 30 pounds, so at 9 Gs, it feels like a 270-pound defensive tackle sitting on your head. So naturally, terra firma for me never <laughs> felt so good. Great to, great to be back on the ground. However, Joe Montana and Tiger Woods have taken that same flight, and unlike those two, my motion sickness bag remained unsoiled. 
<laughs> See, the other thing different too, Adrian, is your pocketbook. Adrian, from those two guys. Now tell the truth that two pounds of soda crackers you had the night before kept your stomach from, from jumping up there. <laughs> There's a flag and, a, and a, the play is going to be stopped short. That's great. That, that's, a, that's a nice trip and a good experience for you, Adrian. I know those guys are truly outstanding uh, individuals and fun to be around, aren't they? They are that, and I'll tell you, the soda crackers, they always talk about eating smart, Ron, and never once did I think about <laughs> using that bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, I I am amazed that they found a cockpit big enough for him. But Adrian now, is a large guy. What is the size limitations? Is it two fifty? Well, for pilots, I, Adrian is what six six, about two eighty, seventy five. It's six six, two fifty. So I was half an inch too tall and five pounds too heavy. But uh, we bent the rules a little bit. <laughs> Third down. The line to make is the thirty nine. Here comes uh, pressure off the corner as they bring the corner back and the pass caught by Spence, the tight end. And he'll take it down to the 35-yard line, tackled by Curry. Three deep coverage and take both tight ends down the field. He's going to run down the middle of the field. The other tight end's over here, and they're reading the free safety. Jason Moss finds Spence right behind the linebacker. Free safety comes over finally to make the hit, and Oregon trying to get in here with 52 seconds to go. Moss sets in the pocket that pass well off the mark. We got a uh, backside receiver one on one. He's going to go on the quarterback. Quarterback draw inside the 20. And he finally is going to be tackled at the eight yard line. Jason Moss made a big play uh, before on a scramble and here runs a draw, makes a little move. On Jeff Maurer and uh, finally tackled. On the seven-yard line, it's first and goal. They have 38 ticks left in the clock. Moss rolls the pocket. Now here comes the pressure. Throws back and just throws this one away. Short drop. Quick pass. Touchdown, Oregon. Tony Hartley. Well, Jason Moss hit the little quick slant pass and had some zip on the football. As Akili Smith uh, cheers him on. Both quarterbacks have had uh, an outstanding first half. Total domination. Really has been. And what's interesting is uh, Joshua Smith is going to attempt this extra point. 28 seconds left in this first half. It's been a very long one, and particularly if you're from the Air Force Academy. There's one right down the middle. Jason Moss looking all the way for Tony Hartley on the quick slam. Smog, Sean Smog, number 10, trying to get his hand in there, just couldn't deflect the football. Difference in this ball game, and then of course you get 26 to nothing behind, you got to throw a little bit more, but Rich Stubler's uh, defense, the Oregon defense has been big and has played better in this ball game than they probably played all year against the run. The ball recovered by the Air Force Academy as uh, it hit one of the up. There. Morgan on first down, throws his pass, got it to play to Rillos, and he will take it down to the 40-yard line as Fletcher comes over to make the tackle. Brings it out of the backfield, and that's rough. Breaks one tackle and is going to take it to the 37-yard line. Six seconds now on the clock. City never sleeps. The electric bill I would love to see just for the strip. Air Force got six seconds left on the clock. Morgan going to take this one to the end zone and tipped away. Ducks of the Pac-10 Conference of Oregon uh, shutting out the Air Force Academy in the first half. And Mike Godfrey, looking at the defensive numbers for the first 30 minutes, Chris Gizzi only one and a half tackles. That, to me, just <laughs> that outlines exactly what happened in the first half. Ron, that speaks volumes. And then you look on the other side of the ball, Blaine Morgan with just a, a very poor passing game in the first half. And the, they've been taken out of everything. Uh, and then you look at the start of this ball game. I think they yeah. set the tempo. Oregon set it right off the bat. This is the first play right here. And Johnson with the big long catch. He was able to get behind the Air Force secondary. And then McCullough come 
came right back with this long run for a touchdown, and it was 13-0 before uh, Air Force uh, could even get their feet on the ground. 149 yards, Mike, on those first two plays, 69 and 76. And Unbelievable. Yeah, and you look at the statistics, rushing yardage for Air Force, only 82 yards, being outrushed by Oregon, and that's not, that's their game. Now time of possession, uh, the Air Force Academy, and as you mentioned, that can be very, very deceiving. 17:03 at 12:57, as you look at Morgan and limping a little bit as this night has gotten cooler and cooler as the desert darkness uh, comes here in the valley, just outside of Las Vegas, and we are kicking off the second half. They got one shot, Ron. They need to hit this uh, first series here and make their adjustments and uh, get something to go on. Let's see what adjustments they make here in the second half. Now this running play will go for about three yards, and White will come over to uh, to make the tackle. Ruff left the field, number 19, at the end of the first half. He is back in the ballgame to start the second half as the pitch goes to Singleton, and he will uh, make the corner and uh, he'll take it to the 37 yard line. Let's check in with Adrian. Ron as Air Force Academy came out of the field after halftime Fish to Barry told me that Blaine Morgan is playing about 70 percent now to give that offense some boost. They brought in some big hitters his big brother Bo and D Dallas the most recent successful quarterbacks here at the Academy. They suggested to him we need a little bit more uh, misdirection. That's what we're going to see here early in the second half. They also helped him with some of his passing plays. You mentioned the crown on this field. It's eight inches drop gentlemen from the middle of the field to the sidelines. That's a lot. That's big Adrian when you not practiced on it that much and and he's been out the whole time he's been here. Pressure the pitch. Boy, I'll tell you, Singleton did a marvelous job of just gathering that thing in, and it's going to wind up being a loss on the play. And as Oregon defense, much maligned during the season, has certainly stepped forward in this game tonight. Well, Peter Sermon, uh, the linebacker, 44, is going to come on a blitz, and uh, he really makes a hit on Blaine Morgan and force that place. Oregon's not sitting back. They're attacking the line of scrimmage. They're attacking the option. They're not giving them any chance to get stuck. And they're coming after him again, and he gets it away. End over end, it's returnable. Johnson from the 29 gets what he can and then heads out of bounds at the 39-yard line. So Oregon will take it over with very good field position to open the second half. 34 yards in the punt and 10 on the return. Now, Keeley Smith probably will be the starter here the second half. He had the first quarter, and it looked like uh, Jason Moss was given the second, and they'll probably alternate the third and fourth the same way as they did the first. So McCullough, a very deep set. He's almost eight yards behind uh, the center. Gets the handoff, starts to the right, takes it to the left, and he'll have about five. And now here comes a late flag in, and that normally is where offensive holding is playing. Holding on the offense, 15 yards first down. He's done an outstanding job in this ball game. He's resigned his position. We'll talk a little bit about him later, but uh, uh, they've had three coaches leave the staff uh, during this period of time preparing for the ball game. Keely Smith, short drop, gets it out to Johnson. He is hit, and that's a nice open field stop in Colorado. Ron, both coordinators are going to leave their jobs. Here, Rich Stubler, of course, is looking uh, to, to go back uh, in the pro football. So he's had five, six opportunities, uh, uh, and he's looking at both of them. And here is uh, Dirk Cutter right here. Uh, here's Stubler right here, the defensive coordinator. Dirk Cutter took the Boise State head job. So uh, Mike Bellotti not only having to prepare for a bowl game, but also find some coaches. And pass well overthrown. Tony Hartley was the closest man to it, but it was well over his head. He was an interesting player, Keeley Smith, when we talked to him the other day. Uh, he wanted to play well. He had a lot of people coming down from California for the ball game. And it's interesting, he was going to go to Cal, and then he heard rumors that uh, uh, the head coach Mariucci was going to leave and go to the uh, 49ers so he opted in, uh, to go to Oregon. Third down and they need about 16 yards for the first and hit immediately is win and this is what the coaches at Oregon called the obligatory fullback carry. He gets like one a game. He's there as a blocker. Yeah, He's a designated blocker. He was a walk on that has earned himself the starting uh, uh, role as the fullback and they said they always practice and they'll always give him one play and I can tell you they're taking this play out of the game plan today. Sean he's not going to run again. Sean Thomas took the play and uh, just stepped all over. 
the spiral knocked at a turnover. Returnable and Farmer, nice job with an open field tackle as he crosses the 30 to the 31 yard line. Joiner on the special team. So let's take a timeout. Part of the strip. Of course, <laughs> the scene of action, particularly on a Saturday night, any Saturday night, but the Saturday night before Christmas in this city, it is very, very busy. You see Oregon jumping around on defense. They come with the late blitz, and the quick screen is thrown complete, and Farmer tackled after a gain of about six. Now, Mike, talk about this. The Oregon coaches, and particularly the defensive staff, Coach Stubler, said that what they will try very hard to do is bring still a different scheme in the second half so they can stay ahead of Air Force. Which I think is a great idea. They opened the first half and played mostly, predominantly, a four-man front. Now they're in a five-man front. Uh, they're going to four-man play in the five-man front right here, trying to make sure that the adjustments at halftime that the Air Force makes, that they're going to be able to adjust themselves. This is Singleton at the 15. Stepped out of bounds just shy of the 10-yard line. Your wide receivers in a wishbone offense option offense has to get in the way of the defensive back. Here's the kick out. Now, here's the good block by Perota. That you talked about. Now he's going to pick up. There's a missed tackle. Pick up the block of Barron, number 85. There he is, right here. There's Mike Barron, right there. Just getting into the defensive back. Bowman just enough to spring him. 51 yards in the carry, straight ahead. Perota, and he dives inside the five, and he's down to the three. After this play's over, and the handoff was given to the fullback, Blaine Morgan gets hit by Michael Fletcher. Here's a play, clearly doesn't have the ball. Now, he, he, didn't, he lost him outside, but he got belted by Fletcher. You see the late ship inside with the handoff, and it's Garden White there on the stop and the fullback. Perota to the fullback. Haven't seen Gilliam since early on in the first quarter. And it's Perota straight ahead, hit by Miller, also Garth White. And it's got to be a third down situation, or no, fourth down. Play clock is down to seven, down to six. Morgan straight ahead with the quarterback sneak and we see no movement by the officials to signal I think he's in there touchdown Air Force not taking the ball off the line of scrimmage gets a nice push there from his fullback Matt Perota which is illegal but uh, he helped him in the end zone he's got it so there's a timeout, 8.29 left in the third quarter. 26-7, the Air Force gets on the scoreboard. Pat Johnson, the deep man back, and he will receive this kick. It's short to the 12-yard line. And a flag from way downfield. If it's not the record, it's doggone close. Yeah, I think that's number 14 right yeah. here. On the receiving team, get a 10-yard penalty. First down. Long way away, but they could certainly help out the offense with a break right here. And Keely Smith hands it off. McCullough turns the corner, has five, has ten, and counted off at about 12 yards in the play. Actually, they're going to give him all the way out to the 32 as uh, Gizzy will make the tackle. Straight ahead, weaving his way, and close to 10 yards on that carry as he is smacked down by Tim Curry. But he just kind of weaves behind that big offensive line, taking it to the left and then back to the right. He's a good cutback runner. Uh, signed with Southern Cal out of high school, but then had test problems and uh, had to go to junior college. He went to El Camino Junior College in Los Angeles and uh, is uh, really uh, making a name for himself in this Pac-10 uh, as, as far as running backs go. I've been really impressed with him, Ron. I what he's watching said, him. He's got like 20, uh, like 20 tickets, 20 family and friends coming in for the game. And this is going to be a short live run, and he's not going to have the first down. He only picked up about a half a yard as Fisher and Jenkins combined on the stop. A uh, nice story about Saladin. Uh, when he was in his younger age, eight and nine, his father used to take him down to the Rose Bowl and let him walk around the stadium grass and he said his dad would always tell me I'm going to be special and his dad died when he was 10 and uh, he really uh, he remembers those days walking around the Rose Bowl and uh, he'll be playing a lot of big stadiums uh, before it's all over. 
12 carries, 129 yards for him so far. Third down, and he's going to have the first down, plus about five or six more. As Gizzy will make the tackle. Yeah, they can't stop him. They cannot. Cal McCombs' defense, uh, the defensive coordinators had a great year, but they can't corral this Oregon's offense. Too much size, too much speed for them. Smith rolls the pocket, going to go long, and he just throw him into coverage. It's going to be intercepted. And that's Smog. Nishan Smog, and he will return back to the 25-yard line. Talking to his receiver, Donald Haynes, and maybe he ran the wrong pattern, but he threw the ball up. And again, Nishan Smog. Number 10 who's came in who came into the ball game Frank Steinpine was injured and here's the bad route but here's the interception by Smog and a good return to give decent field position at the 25 yard line. Most important thing is they have the, the Oregon ball. offense yeah. on the side. Yeah they get old McCullough over in the sidelines and uh, Hill comes back in at fullback for the Air Force Academy. And he gets the handoff, but he'll take it for virtually nothing. Well, here comes a reverse. This thing he'll time for the get-go. It is fumbled. It is picked up by White, and he will take it into the end zone for an Oregon touchdown. Well, that play was a bust from the snap. Well, this this play. Uh, it started even before the, the ball was pitched by the quarterback because people were moving in the offensive line, the offensive the, line. The best thing could have happened is Air Force having a flag drop for procedure. Yeah. So what they're saying, Mike, is that ball, what, cannot be advanced because it was a muff. It was not a fumble. When he handed the ball off or pitched it to yeah. him. That's what they're ruling. Right. And you can't advance a month. And it's Kevin Parker who comes in uh, very late. They get plenty of time. The play clock is only at 17. That's Pipe showing blitz on the outside. He comes, but they run away from him. This is Parker. Has five, puts a head down, and he's going to wind up with a gain of about eight. Tim Curry making the tackle. Uh, Dead ball. Personal foul. It's automatic first down. Ron, I think just the right call right here, too, because Tony Hartley was blocking Jason Sanderson, and Jason Sanderson's going to pick up the penalty right here. A little swing there and uh, to the helmet. And the umpire wisely uh, watching downfield fans, and sometimes he'll surprise you. And he surprises us sometimes, too, with that interception. And, uh, and that's why I think you have Jason Moss in the football game. Fumbled the snap, he picks it up, and he's going to be pushed back. Yeah, there goes another flag. Now, there, there, there we, we've got big-time wrestling here. <laughs> Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, second down. Here's the extracurricular activity, and I think the next personal foul, you've got to toss somebody, or you're going to continue to have that. Ten to play third quarter. Look at the penalties. Oregon now 15, 123 yards. Timeout called by the Ducks. 26 to 7. <laughs> and uh, getting in the spirit of the, the season, Santa Claus, who is a full into Air Force tonight. You know why? Because he's a fly guy, too. See? Yeah. 5 0 2 to play third quarter. Second down. Second down and goal. They roll that pocket. Moss back over the middle. Has it complete to Hartley for the touchdown. He's second. Well, they're wide open. They had all kind of time to throw. Jason Moss is uh, and Akili Smith uh, cheering on the backup quarterback, but I think the backup quarterbacks had a better day. Let me tell you something, far better, yeah. Mike. It looks far more composed. Well, Dirk Cutter. Uh, He's got a gun. Yeah, Dirk Cutter said now the offensive coordinator said one thing about Jason Moss, if we tell him to go progression one, two, three, he's going to do that. But sometimes the the better athlete, Akili Smith, makes things happen. Yeah. Uh, so they go for two, trying to make it the 34. It's a seven ball game. That's jokes, the tight end in motion. Moss with the pass has it to Spitz, the tight end for the two points. 
Well, we said it early, Ron, that they, the Air Force has not faced a uh, potent offensive team like Oregon. They, they have it this year. They are outmanned, outspeed, uh, out quickness. The whole works on defense right now. Jason Moss on the touchdown, a little bootleg throw. Tony Hartley sitting down right in the middle of the field. Makes that catch, gets in the end zone for the touchdown. And they're doing the, uh, and that should have been a penalty. Here's the two point play. Jason Moss. 34 points have allowed tonight. They've been given up over the season, barely over 12 for Morgan. It's going to come down to Brown. Q Brown flies into a tackler's arms at the 30 yard line. Godfrey and Adrian Karsten coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. Pitch to Singleton, and he is bumped out of bounds. Here comes a flag. Singleton turned around immediately and said, Hey, how about a penalty on Joyner? And Joyner will get one. It'll be 15 yards added on. And I think Mike Godfrey's right. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. It'll be a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Randy, Randy Crystal and his uh, and his officiating crew trying to get this one in grasp as we check in on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Uh, Ron, very honestly, it's like this loot maybe mocking their military background a little bit that had Fisher DeBerry call all of his troops over and say, gentlemen, we are known, our signature is our discipline. Don't lose it. We may lose this football game, but coaches around America, in fact, gentlemen, uh, Coach Bellotti said it to us yesterday. The first thing he thinks about when he thinks about the academy is the discipline. Fisher DeBerry does not want to lose that, if anything, at this point. That's a good point, Adrian. 34 to 7. They're down right now. The clock just over four and a half minutes to play third quarter. Morgan pitches back to Singleton. Sideline wanted a face mask, but the official was right there and he didn't see one. And Derek or Dietrich Moore on the tackle, the sophomore out of Anchorage, Alaska. As you look at Moss on the sideline, and he didn't start the ball game, but I'll tell you what, his numbers right here 50 percent, 80 yards, two touchdowns. But the most impressive thing is poise and confidence in this game. Well, he really has. He's made plays, he made that big play on that scramble uh, back in the first half where they kind of blew it open uh, after he got the first down to get the score. Well, one of the new theme restaurants here in Las Vegas is called the Rainforest, located inside the MGM Grand Hotel. You'll uh, have plenty of company for lunch as you sit in comfort right in the middle of a tropical rainstorm. <laughs> it really wasn't the elephant. That that was that was Adrian. He was having to stand in line too long waiting for that lunch. Buffet. <laughs> Play action. Sits on it, gets the pass away, and he is off the mark. It was rough. Play fake, and of course, when you get behind as a wishbone team and you have to throw, it's no surprise. Desmond Burke came into the ball game with 34 tackles and has been a dominant defensive lineman in this game. So it's third down. They need to take it to the Oregon 40-yard line. Morgan under heavy pressure. Hit is at a fumble. And nope, they say incomplete pass. Yeah, Dietrich Moore got penetration. It was a throwback screen. And uh, Blaine Morgan just never got a chance to throw this. Dietrich Moore comes off the sideline, beats the block of the running back. Hey. Oregon taking a timeout. Three minutes and 52 seconds left in the third quarter. As we take a look at the, the 98 schedule uh, of Oregon, Michigan State, UTEP, San Jose State. I think State. this is going to be a pretty good football team next year. Defensively, they'll be better. Uh, and of course, they shown tonight what people thought Mike Bellotti's defense could play. But offensively, they lose eight seniors and replace uh, a lot of veteran football players. Fair catch is called for and made by Pat Johnson. Inside the 15-yard line. 33 yards and a kick at the Air Force Academy again. Or rather, uh, Oregon is going to take over with one of their poor field positions to start with on the night. 
looks like McCullough will come back in. You were talking to him about Ahmad Rashad breaking his record, and, <laughs> and he said he was looking forward to meeting him to tell him that he didn't have the record anymore. Yeah, that was a there was a rumor that uh, Ahmad was going to be here to play in the NFL golf tournament, and then he was coming to this ball game. And uh, Saladin said that he hoped that he was willing to uh, tell him that the record was his now. Moss's pass got it to Spence, the tight end, and he will take it all the way out to the 36, maybe the 37 yard line. Good catch again by the big tight end, Blake Spence. Pretty good target at six foot four, uh, 245 pounds. to the right side and they hem him in and which is what you have to do you can see the people on the outside instead of coming too quickly to the play breaking down making sure that they forced him back inside types made the tackle but of course pipes is the Falcon they're coming from like that strong safety position and that's what the force was about 14 carries 138 yards Moss sidearms this one and he's got it to McCory Collins Collins still fighting his way. He's going to take it out to about the 46 as Nashawn Smog makes the tackle on him. Also, uh, Gizzy is there. Now, look at the size of this young man, Mike. I'm amazed. He's like their number five wide receiver. Uh, he's, he's a redshirt freshman at 6'4 and a half, 215. I saw him working day before yesterday out here. I thought, good heavens, he looked big enough to be a linebacker. Yeah, you're impressed with him. LaCorey Collins has good size, good speed, and they. Uh, coach has said that you know he just needs some playing experience. Also, his high school coach told Oregon when he decided to come there that he might even use him as a rush in on defense. Cullen takes the handoff, runs it back into the boundary, and uh, he will be tackled at the 47 of Air Force. Uh, they have so many weapons, so much speed. When you start out on the outside with Johnson, who has uh, legitimate track speed, and you McCullough off inside, you got guys like Hartley, and then Blake Spence can control you as a tight end. Hit in the backfield. He'll fight his way forward. Curry coming off the corner and also Schumacher. It's been a long ball game for Air Force. Quarterback draw. Hit. Loses the football. Picked up by Fisher. And Bryce Fisher is going to take it for the touchdown for the Air Force Academy. One he'll remember for a long time. Well, that's for sure. And particularly coming from the great Northwest, which <laughs> right next door to the state of Oregon. I'm going to say officially 45 yards on that return. Morgan throws it intercepted by the Oregon defensive uh, safety Figueres. Let's see who makes this hit on this play. Well, it's uh, more. Jeff Moore, Jeff isn't Moore it, made the hit. Yeah. He caused the fumble. Bryce Fisher picked it up in every defensive lineman's dream. That's for sure. 45 yards. Bryce runs pretty well for he defensive looks, line. Not bad. Runs with his head up. Here's the extra point. The interception by Figueres. Mm. Poor throw. Along with Jason Cooper. And this one's going to go to Johnson's side at the four. Tried to reverse his field, and he pays for it short of the 20-yard line. That's a nice job by uh, Charlie Jackson of the special teams. This game is almost three hours old. McCullough. He gets bratted by Finnan, Sean Finnan, senior out of Belleville, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. If they're not going to try to run another one, it's down to eight, down to seven. So that is the end of the third quarter. Well, the Air Force cheerleaders still working uh, very hard for their football team, although they're down by 21 points. With the final 15 minutes to come of this uh, Las Vegas Bowl 1997, it's the beginning of the bowl season. The first of 10 games that you'll see on either ESPN2 or ESPN. Moss, as he gets it away, Johnson on the receiving end, he's going to score another one. This one from what do we got? 77 yards. Ron, he took a hit. Jason Moss, when he threw that football, I believe Chris Gizzy. Yep, it was Gizzy. Hit him just as he threw the football. He got enough on that ball to get the ball to Pat Johnson. 
for the touchdown. What an outstanding day for Jason Moss. Chris Gizzy just a little bit late. Look at Chris Gizzy make that hit on Jason Moss. He couldn't even follow through on that throw. And what's here's, your... here's the other side of it. Pat Johnson and that uh, sprinter speed. It was Smog who jumped over his shoulder and then went to the ground and missed the tackle. Joshua Smith to attempt the extra point for Oregon. And he's got it. Well, we've got a new kicker in the game. Arash Imami will kick it off for the Oregon Ducks. The other guy's tired. Kicked off a bunch. And this return by Brown for the seven-yard line. Oh, the heavens, does he get tagged? Well, when you beat Washington, uh, shows you have a pretty good football team. This team has come alive toward the end of the season. Well, one of the things that uh, their head coach said yesterday is you look at the scoring drives and the length of time, 18, 12, 48, 37, and 42 seconds. And uh, the amazing thing is that that 48-second one there <laughs> had seven plays in it. That's amazing. Took a while. For Johnson, five catches, 169 yards, two touchdowns, three punt returns for 29, and three kickoff returns for 54. Flag comes down. Offside on the defense. It'll be a five yard penalty, and we'll repeat first down. Keeps it himself. It's Peter Sermon, as we mentioned off the top of the telecast. And if you wondered why you haven't seen Joe, Joe Ingram, Singleton runs the reverse. There's only a couple there. Again, it's Peter Sermon. Joe Ingram, dehydration, flu like symptoms. He spent the night in the hospital and they, they didn't even bring him out here to the ballpark this afternoon. There's Rich Stubler right here. He's a, a happy man because uh, he's leaving his job today. Uh, this is his last ball game. Is, the coordinator and coach at uh, Oregon, and he's going to go and in, uh, in back into pro football. Third down, and the quick out pass caught by Farmer, and then he is knocked out of bounds hard at the 44. And that's what you have to do if you're running back in the Air Force system like Tobin Ruff is. You may get to carry the ball uh, several times, but you're going to have to block a lot. Number 19 does just that right there sealed the corner on the outside Rashad Bowman I bet it, it was Dylan Newman who caught the ball yeah. I beg your pardon I called Farmer block runs with 12 and a half minutes to play in this one quick out pass that's a lateral he can uh, throw it again but he elected to try to run and now here comes a late flash yeah. white and Desmond Bird are those three uh, seniors that start holding on the offense it'll be a 10 yard penalty and we'll replay first down Ron, now I know you're up on all sports in uh, Oregon. That's just uh, some of their well-known athletes in the past. Who well, the, comes to mind? The two that come to mind are two quarterbacks. Oh, my favorite. One of my favorite quarterbacks now, Dan Fouts. Oh, I thought you were going to say Norm Van Brock. Well, he was. Uh, he well, was he's a, from Arizona. He, yeah, he's a great, great for both of them. Dan Fouts is one of the, the all-time greats. Well, and there's a golfer that has always been one of my favorites. You remember Jake Trout and the, <laughs> the singing group? Oh my goodness, what a hit on Singleton as he's going to be knocked down for a loss. And Air Force going the wrong way. But Peter Jacobson uh, went to yeah. Oregon. Who else, Gene, can you name? Well, no, we Mel Renfro, the Cowboys. Oh, names. he was great. Defensive back for Tom Landry. Who else can you come up with there? Well, Steve well, we Prefontaine. Had Track Who? Steve Prefontaine. Oh, okay, all right. Track star. Um, we talked about Ahmad Rashad already. Yeah. yeah. And Lynn Casanova, the all-time great coach there, is here tonight. Named a facility after him. Quarterback draw, and he'll lose again. Patu comes in to make the tackle. Saul Patu. Freshman 6'3", 240. There's no design now. Nothing's going to fool uh, Oregon's defense. Well, 
know, the option back into the open side of the field, loses his footing and goes down. Now yeah, they have just been, been outclassed with speed and quickness by uh, Oregon and both on offense and defense and in special teams. This has been a whitewash. Punt of the night by the Air Force Academy as Johnson waits. And Oregon's got the return on. He's going to bounce right to him. Gets by the first wave. Hang on. He could go. And finally steps out of bounds as a couple of more blue shirts came over to run him out of bounds. But for a moment there, it looked as though he might have an opportunity to get in that end zone again. Timeout on the field following a 43-yard punt and a 19-yard return. Air Force is about to make a change in quarterback. Cale Bonds is warming up, and on the field, A.J. Feely, number seven, a redshirt freshman out of Ontario, California, is uh, the new quarterback, 6'4", 205. And running play is going to go for about four, maybe five yards. Jason Cooper is uh, the ball carrier. As you look at Moss on the sideline, and uh, he's feeling good about his team and about himself, and he should. He has had a heck of a ball game tonight, as has a, a number of his teammates. Saladin McCullough, also Pat Johnson. Johnson has been unbelievable. Akili Smith led this uh, football team early and got him going. Tony Hartley with a yeah. couple of touchdown passes. Everybody has contributed on the offensive side of the ball. Blake Spence, although he dropped one, <laughs> he uh, has had himself a good ball game. And the unsung hero is the defensive coordinator, Rich Stubler, because uh, the, the plan that he put in for the option. And, and when you look at Air Force, Ron, they've accomplished a lot this year. A uh, big season when nobody expected it. Uh, after the 1993 season, Fisher DeBerry is 4-8. and eight. Of course, he's had so much success there. Uh, they developed new formations for the option game. And in the last 10 years, only Nebraska has ran for more yards than the Air Force, so uh, a proud program. Well off to Cooper, turns the corner on the right side, runs into his own blocker and takes down the defensive back at the same time, Smog, and that's enough for the uh, for the first down. You were talking about uh, all the Oregon players, and uh, you look at 83, he's had a big day. Pat Johnson showing the speed. Opening play. People didn't even sit down yet. And he caught that touchdown pass. Throw from Jason Moss. A good catch, good concentration on that play. First, first play of the first quarter, first play uh, or early on in the second quarter, and they score again. Ball is loose, and Air Force has recovered. On the football is Tyler. Pass incomplete as the receiver Farmer could not hold on. Singleton in motion to go straight ahead. The handoff to Perota. He started the night. Ten carries for 20 yards for the fullback today. Two yards per, per try uh, for fullbacks for the Air Force Academy. It now takes an Oregon bounce, and it's going to be touched down by the Air Force Academy at the 36. So it's a 35-yard kick. There's a timeout, 6.56 remaining in our ball game, 41 to 13. Welcome back to the 1997 Las Vegas Bowl. The Oregon Ducks versus, obviously, the Fighting Falcons of the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Adrian. All right, we are back at the desert. We have uh, 6.56 left in uh, this football game, and it's uh, all controlled by these guys from Eugene. 41 to 13, they lead the Air Force Academy. across the 40 to the 42 yard line. He hurt his knee in the third game of his sophomore year and he said then he promised himself that he'd play every practice and every game as it and every play as it was his last and that's the way he's played his entire career. This is Cooper 
And he gets out of bounds after picking up the first down. By the way, speaking of, uh, of Chris Gizzi, yesterday over at Caesars Palace, the uh, Air Force Academy held a special graduation ceremony for him. Uh, following at serious knee injury his sophomore year, he was granted what is really a rare special exemption from the Academy's rigid four years and out system. Uh, and he finishes up this fall. You could, all his teammates came over. They are so proud of him and glad that the Academy did what they did to pay tribute to a very special young man. By the way, Chris pointed out with a graduation class of one that it still doesn't mean that he's the valedictorian, <laughs> which I think. <laughs> oh, well, awesome. he is for a day. Yeah, he is. And, uh, but they, they talk about it to Air Force. The coaches said the more pro scouts have come through uh, Air Force this year. And then a long, long time to look, take a look at him. Now the tackle is going to be made as he is pushed out of bounds. Now here comes the flag in. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. <laughs> Second down. Well, another one against Oregon. Bailey's pass well off the mark. Sets to throw again. And he's got it complete. It's Kevin Parker. Inside the 40 down to the 36 yard line. That's that same route. Four verticals where you take all four wide receivers and run them down the field on streak routes. I tell you, A.J. Feely had the fourth quarterback to that race. They, they've got a quarterback log jamming. On the offense, it'll be a 10 yard penalty, and we'll replay first down. Well, the Duck fans that have come down here from Eugene, and there have been a, yeah. quite a few. I've oh, run this a bunch yeah. of them. Yeah. You know, I felt like before the game, though, that Feely, even though he's the number three quarterback, is a really popular guy, really here in Vegas. I've seen his number all over the place. Seven. <laughs> There's times where you don't want to see that number. Don't want to see Feely, huh? No, he don't want to see seven. Oh. 5.04 to play as they roll the pocket, reverse it, back to the right, throws complete. Inside the 30 and down to the 26-yard line, and it's Jed Weaver on the receiving end of this By one. Way, this is the most points Oregon has ever scored in a bowl game. The old record was uh, 35. That was in that Independence Bowl game, 1992, against Wake Forest. I had that game. I was talking about the long jam and quarterback here. Uh, the receivers tell me that A.J. Feely may actually throw the hardest, tightest football. You can actually, uh, in practice, they hear it coming. And they got to spin their head around right away and make sure they know exactly where that ball is. Obviously, he spent a lot of time with the scout team, but he really throws a very hard ball. They have compared him to the way Brett Favre carries out his fakes as well, Ron and Mike. He really does a fantastic uh, job carrying all the way through to the end of the play. Had a touchdown, ran for one, and threw for one against Arizona State as a matter of fact. Takes it to the 23-yard line. Ole Miss and LSU played at that famous Billy Cannon return game, and then they played him again in the Sugar Bowl, and then that one was totally reversed, 21 to nothing, 7 to 3. LSU won the first one, so you're right. When you look at LSU uh, in that ball game, they lose their defensive coordinator Carl Reese to uh, Texas and uh, hired Lou Tepper. So how quick he can get in the uh, fold in that ball game may be a factor too. Uh, and then we catch Georgia and Wisconsin. Uh, that should be a good ball game. I think it will. Big Ten. And you know, Mike, that also probably will be one of the most heavily attended ball yep. games because Wisconsin brings oh. a lot of folks. They stopped by there on the way home. <laughs> that pass thrown complete to Collins. He gets blitzed. Whoa, what a hit here. Cooper motor in those legs. He's down to the 11-yard line, and uh, beg your pardon, it's crunk. 20, 30 rather than 20. They're, they're going to be a factor in the whack again next year. The five-yard line is crump and still fighting as we're at 130. And 20-hour work week, they've been going on that for a long time. You know, Ron, to add to that, uh, when you talked to Cal McCombs yesterday, one of the assistant coaches, uh, he sat there and he he praise on uh, Fisher about the way uh, he handles the program that he allows still allows fun in this program. He wants them to have fun because he knows how hard it is at the Air Force Academy and he doesn't want them to come out to football and be drudgery there. So he makes yeah. it fun. So he's a he's a gentleman. There's Bob Noblick, the 
offensive coordinator for Cal McCombs. Years also. Yeah, the defensive coordinator, and of course Fisher with a good staff. And uh, on the other side, Mike Bellotti gets his uh, first bowl win. Now I'll tell you, he's got some impressive young players, just like this fellow right here. I'll tell you, these two young running backs that have come in in the last part uh, have been extremely impressive. That's going to be the final play of the ball game. Down to one second, and Oregon has broken their drought in the 90s in the bowl games, and I'll tell you, they have broken it in a very big way. 41 to 13, they have won over the Air Force Academy tonight. For Mike Godfrey and Adrian Karsten and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.